Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part two of making the hands for my life-sized Iron Man suit. If you remember from part one, I made a life cast of both my hands. Here they are. And I've now glued the fingers back onto this one where they fell off in the uh, demolding process. Have a look at part one to see how I did that using alginate and plaster. The plan now is to make a clay sculpt over the hands to sculpt the palm sections which I'll then be remoulding and casting to make the rigid armour pieces. So there's the LED cluster which has to fit in the palm of each hand. So you can see the size comparison there to the actual hand and that's my actual hand. It's obviously exactly the same size and shape as my hand. I've got some red oil based clay there, it's clean clay which there's not very much left of because the manufacturer has gone out of business but I happen to have some and I'm using it just because it's red really. I've got various sculpting tools and another whole box of sculpting tools that I've accumulated over the years. So uh, various things in there including cookie cutters and various loop tools and various other things. So let's get going and try to make a thing that looks like Iron Man's palm. So we're not doing too bad so far. Uh, basically just trying to make um, the approximate shape and try and get some edges on like I've got on the thumb there. You can just about see to do some more of that round the cuff and sort the fingers out. Obviously I need to do this to both hands and then I need to put the detail on and basically the space for the LED cluster to go. I'm not sure if I'll sculpt that in or if I can find something plastic that I can embed in there. Um, obviously that will come through into the cast and then we can actually cut the hole out in the finished cast to fit the LED cluster in. So that's what I've done around the fingers and the thumb so there's a nice edge. Obviously when this is a plastic part I'll be able to um, sand those back with a drum sander so I'm not quite sure how restrictive that's going to be on movement but um, I'll be able to cut those back but for now I'm going to make them as tight as possible so obviously I can cut off what I have got but I can't add some back on later. Obviously in clay I can, but when I've made a cast that's a rigid part I won't be able to. So this is what I've got so far, I've just put this on the window ledge so we've got daylight outside and you can see the imperfections a bit better, of which there are many, there's quite a lot of smoothing to do. Uh, basically I've cut in the major features and the clay was a bit thin on that side hence it's gone through to the plaster but it doesn't really matter. Obviously when I make a mould off this, make a plaster cast, I'll be able to give that a sand as well and then vacuum forming over it will mean that lots of the minor imperfections won't show through. Obviously it's best to um, have the smoothest sculpt that you can because clay is a lot easier to smooth or at least it's softer than a rigid cast. Um, so yeah, quite a lot more smoothing to do and of course the whole other hand. So several days later I've now completed both hand sculpts. Um, they're not perfect, so they're not perfectly symmetrical either but they're as good as I can do really. I've also blocked up the fingers with some extra clay so that uh, when I use moulding silicon I don't get chunks, uh, chunks stuck in there that I can't get out. So I've got some silicon here which is Repsil E30. I've also got some chunks of silicon cut up from previous moulds which I use to make mould keys. And I've got a couple of, uh, at least one throwaway brush so I can uh, brush the silicon on the first thin coat to get into all the details and get the air bubbles out plan is going to be one thin coat of silicon, then I'm going to use the thickener additive to thicken it up so I can spread it on like butter to make two thicker coats, stick the mould keys on, 
Um, when that's all set, then I'll be using mod rock to make a rigid mother mould to support the mould. And then hopefully we'll be able to demould it and make a cast. So the original plan was to make a plaster cast so that we can then go and use that for a vacuum form to make a shell of the palms. Although I may just make a fiberglass cast straight into the mould and see how that turns out. Okay, so I've mixed up my first batch of silicon, which is just mixed up with the base product and the catalyst at 5%. I've got a set of scales there, which I've measured it on. And I'm just going to pour that all over the hands, basically. Make sure that's not too near the edge, because some is bound to run off. Gonna try and brush that into all of the details. See bubbles rising to the surface out of the details, which is good because it means they've risen away from the sculpt and to the surface. Very sure that there's no air trapped in there. I can keep brushing this around for quite some time. Alright, so I've um, got all of the detail covered, so that should be fine. So wait for that to go off, and then we'll put on a thickened coat or two. Here's the next batch of silicon. This one I've mixed up with the thickener additive to make a paste which I can spread on like butter, so you can see that's much less runny, which means it won't run off. So Basically, I'm just going to spread that on all over with both of these. Make a nice thick mould. Right, so I'm just going to stick these chunks on. Just a couple on each one. And that will make a registration key for the next stage, which is the mother mould which means that the rubber will always insert um, correctly back into the mother mould so the mould will always hold its shape so try and make the silicon as smooth as I can but the next thing will be putting a one thin coat of silicon all over it as well to smooth out all of these um, markings on the silicon so that it fits in and out of the mother mould smoothly and there aren't any bits that get stuck Basically, that's the, the best way to make sure that the rubber fits inside the mother mould and you don't end up with lumps and bumps which shouldn't be there, sort of pushed through into the inside of the mould. So we'll let that set up, we'll do one more thin coat and then we'll do the mother mould. Right, final coat unthickened. Just smooth out all of that. Here we go, and that should run off and make a nice smooth coating in the ends. So that last coat of silicon has gone off, it's now the next day. So I've got a nice smooth surface, so bits and pieces won't get stuck into the mother mould. I've got some mod rock, which is plaster of Paris bandages, and a bucket of warm water. And basically you soak this stuff in water, wring it out as much as you can, spread it onto the piece. Um, basically it's got pl it's plaster impregnated bandage so the plaster sets and it goes rigid and that makes a nice firm mother mould to support the rubber. Now I've got to be careful that I don't um, get any of that onto the plaster cast of the actual hand because it'll stick and I'll never get it off. So I need to sort of um, cover as much as I can to support it but not going too near the fingers that are sticking out and so on. So let's get on with that. Right, so I've covered those quite well. Um, the plaster will start to turn hard in about 15 minutes. In fact, it feels fairly firm already on some of those earlier layers. 
and then we'll need to let the water dry out which will take about 24 hours on top of a radiator and then the mod rock will achieve its full strength and then we'll be able to pull it off and demold it and we should have a rubber mold that fits nicely due to the registration keys back into the rigid mod rock mother mold so it's about a day later and uh, the mod rock has gone off it's not damp at all now you can feel it's really really rigid i should be able to pull this off in one piece yeah there we go so it needs a bit of a trim but that is uh basically a rigid plaster cast and you can see where the uh, mold keys for the silicon fit back into the the mother mold so now i just need to pull off the silicon which might be a bit harder There we go. So there's the mould for the, uh, obviously the hand with all the details. Obviously that's quite flexible. And that's what this piece is for. So that fits back in there, like that. And you can see that those mould keys fit perfectly back into the holes. And that means you can always locate it perfectly and that basically obviously holds the mould rigid so that you can fiberglass into this or something without it flexing all over the place. So let's demold the other one. We need to give this a trim as well. And then we'll have two moulds for the hands. So that's both, uh, both moulds removed from the sculpts. See they're both back in their uh, Modrock mother moulds. And we're ready for the next stage which is going to be making some sort of cast into these. Now I was going to make a plaster cast and then vacuum form over that to make um, basically rigid shells. Although what I might do is actually just make a fiberglass cast in here. I haven't actually decided what I'm going to do yet. But um, if you check out my blog and website for updates as I do it and there'll be another video coming soon.